Well, this is just a simple explanation of how I get power from the planet. If you can make it out, that's the top of my ground rod sticking out the back of my door. It's not in very deep. It goes in there, and this white piece of Romex, I'm using the one conductor of the three, the ground conductor, as a matter of fact, clamped to it. Might be difficult to see, but that's all that is, is a ground rod. I can touch it with no danger of shock at all. I follow the conductor on around because it's a little bit too long. Back and around. Maybe now time to straighten it up and make it look nice. And I tied it right here to the edge of this bench. And I clamped this little green conductor to it. That is my earth ground connection. The little green conductor goes in this panel here, which is basically a circuit I use to gather this power. Once I gather it, I found a way to store it and then use it. This is an inverter, uh, 12 volt DC to 120 volt AC, 1000 watt surge inverter. And this is a battery bank, if you want to call it that. They're both quite old, but it's easier to demonstrate this with older batteries than it is newer batteries. Um, I'll have to give you an explanation of how the device works but in simple forms. Um, when X of L equals X of C or another X of L, R is zero and it becomes the resistance and ohms along. If uh, this LC circuit is producing, I don't know, let's say 1500 volts, then there are also 1500 amps, only they're out of phase, which means basically all you can use them for is some light and spark, handy in some cases for like such as ignition and uh, fluorescent lights, but you can't get much mechanical use out of them. Basically with this panel, I found a way to change that. And as I was saying about this particular type of energy, um, when it's generated, it's hardly, hardly capable of all of doing any mechanical. Uh, one thing I found about this type of energy is also that it's totally reverse yeah. of what we consider conventional power. Conventional power, say household current, or even battery current inside uh, an automobile will burn up low resistance. For instance, if we took a 5 ohm resistor and plugged it into our household receptacle, it would shortly heat up and burn open. And if we took a 5 mega ohm resistor and plugged it in, shortly, I mean, nothing would happen. This is just the opposite. If I plugged in a 5 ohm resistor the output of this power, not very much would happen. If I uh, plug in a 5 mega ohm, it would heat it open. So the most interesting part about this particular device is I can not only gather this particular energy, but I can use it safely without burning up transistors. So you can, <coughs> that was uh, the problem. In the past, uh, the energy itself, it's not very difficult. It's quite, mis it's usually, usually taken out of context. But for instance, um, this panel is nothing more than a box with a bunch of module units and it's everything in it, switches, capacitors, 
capacitors, electronic components. So this meter is simply an analog meter. Digital meters will not work with this power. It'll drive it nuts. In fact, um, too often when you're when you've got it, you will see, you'll think you won't. So analogs work the best. This is a, a microamp meter, 50 microamps. I put a one meg ohm resistor in series with it and converted it to a zero to 50 volt meter. And I'm using these two old batteries. This one here will only charge to four volts. This one will charge to five and a half to six. And this one sometimes will go to 12. As you can tell, I'm going to turn the switch on. See the needle go up to this appropriate voltage. And now if I load it, you see it drop just a little. Sort of like um, turning the headlights on and this, if this were the meter in the dashboard of your car. The old uh, charging indicators on like a on the dashboard of a vehicle. So what I found was when I take this energy and mix it with that, I begin to charge. See the needle begin to move? So legally, everything to the right of that volt mark, which is uh, around a little less than 24 volts, would be free energy. This particular device is limping because it's missing a major component. But there was enough here to give this demonstration. I'm doing it for a few friends. Now then, if I load this just to prove that it's not voltage, still indicating a charge, and I'm running a 100-watt light bulb as well as a, an 800-watt inverter. 